Hi, I'm Sam from Cinch, and this is our guide to electric car charging basics. With us is Abhishek Sampat, Cinch's head of electric vehicles. Hi, Sam. Hey, so electric cars, do they come with charging cables? So both battery electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles come with charging cables. There's two types of cables you typically get with one of these cars. One of them has a three-pin plug at one end, which takes power from the national grid, which is AC. And the other end of the cable plugs into your car. And you can charge your car with this quite happily. What about the other cable? So the other cable is also an AC cable. Uh, it has the same connector at one end that goes into the car. This is called a type two connector. And the other end connects to a charger. Now this is a dedicated charger that could be, for example, something installed at your house professionally for domestic charging. Uh, but also if you go out in public, you'll find places like supermarkets and some lampposts and councils as well. You can plug into them and you can charge your car off of those. So this is a really useful charger to have. It's the same standard in Europe, and this is the common standard now for all EVs. So you can take it with you, drive into the continent, no problem. It's pretty straightforward. But some older EVs come with a connector that looks like this. So this is the Type 1 connector. It's not very popular anymore, but the other end will still work the same way. Plugs into a charger at home, plugs into chargers in public. So if your car has a connector that looks like this, that's the cable you need. And if you're not sure about it for some reason, just look at the handbook and see what cable it suggests. It's pretty straightforward. If it plugs in and fits, it works. So how quickly will these cables and chargers get my car ready to hit the roads? So we'll always deliver a car to you with ample charge left in it, but it's really a question about the power source and the charger you're connected to. Now, some chargers are classified as fast, some are rapid, some are ultra rapid, but that's not really comparable unless you know. Uh, it's better to talk about them in the form of kilowatt because that's a number that you can compare as well. So what are the different charger types and what kind of charge times can they offer? I'm going to explain it in the form of a bucket. So the bucket is your battery and you're filling the bucket from a tap. Now, the bigger the tap, the faster you can fill the bucket. So in this case, the flow into the bucket is kilowatt, which is how fast you can charge the car. So as an example, the three pin plug I showed you earlier, that will give you about 2.3 kilowatt. It's a really small tap because it's a really small plug. Whereas from a professionally installed charger at home, for example, that'll give you typically seven kilowatt and public AC charging is about up 22 kilowatt. So for overnight or longer term parking, uh, you'll have to think about that and how long you want the car to be plugged in to get it to about 80%-ish or more. And what about these bigger public chargers like the ones around us, how do they work? So these are DC chargers. So the battery of your electric vehicle is a DC battery. So energy can flow in faster. They usually run at about 50 to 100 kilowatt, and they are capable of charging your car from a really low state of charge to 80% in half an hour or 45 minutes. So that's really quick. They're there for rapid turnaround, and you're seeing more and more of these out in public on the street, in some supermarkets, in electric forecourts like this one, and also now in more and more on petrol forecourts. As you can see, they've got cables attached to them, so you don't need to bring your own, just use the one that's there. I've seen that some of these chargers have two cable types. What's that all about? So there's the CCS2, which is the combined charging system too, like this one, which is now the industry standard, which plugs into all new EVs. This is the DC standard for everyone. And this other one is called CHAdeMO. It's an old Japanese standard, which is found in some older Japanese vehicles. It also charges on DC. Shadomo, fun fact, comes from charge and move, which is a play on a Japanese saying for time for tea, which is roughly how long it should take you to charge your car. Enough time to stop, have a cup of tea and leave. Okay, some things to consider then, but the same outcome. Exactly. A quick tea or coffee break, maybe some shopping, and then you've got plenty of juice left in the battery. Exactly, and now there are even faster chargers than that. So beyond 100 kilowatts, you've got 150, 175, 250 and 350 kilowatt chargers, which are capable of putting a lot more energy into the car much faster. So you stop for even less time. They all use the same CCS2 connector as well, so they'll plug straight in. And if your car can take it, it'll take it. If you're thinking of buying a Tesla, you can use other chargers, is that right? That's correct. So Tesla have their own proprietary network of chargers in public called superchargers. They're also DC, they go up to about 250 kilowatt, but they're only available exclusively for Tesla drivers. It doesn't mean that Tesla drivers can't use other public chargers as well, but if you've got a Tesla, it gives you that extra choice. So why do people always talk about charging a car to 80%? So going back to the bucket analogy, uh, when you're filling a bucket, you can fill it to a certain point really quickly, but to fill it to the top perfectly, you slow down how quickly you're filling it. The same thing with batteries. For batteries, you can get to the first 80% relatively quickly, and then the last 20%, the car and the charger start working together to slow it down. So as a rule of thumb, lithium ion batteries like the ones in your car and in your smartphone don't like to be at a really low state of charge or a really high state of charge. 
which is where 80% is this very nice middle ground, perfect number, where you can charge it really quickly, you get the most amount of range as fast as you can, but then it's also good for the battery. So don't charge it too low and don't charge it to 100% all of the time. Okay, so could I damage my car if I plugged it into a charger that outputs a higher power than my battery can handle? No, the car and the charger communicate when they're charging, so they'll take care of it. You don't have to worry about that. Back to home charging. So if people want to take advantage of their off-peak electricity tariff, can they set a timer so their car only charges when it's at its cheapest? Yes, they can. So all electric vehicles have a way of setting a timer for the charge schedule. So set it up in the car, match it to your electricity tariff and your timings, you're off you go. Some of the home chargers that you've had installed professionally also have the same ability to do that. So you can set it up in the car or at home, but don't do it on both. Okay, so let's get to a couple of questions that people regularly ask about electric cars. Can I safely charge an electric car in the rain? Absolutely. The cars and the chargers are designed to work in whatever the weather throws at you. Next question, is it okay to handle these cables when they're plugged into chargers? So well-maintained cables connected to professional installed chargers should be absolutely fine. So the energy only flows once the cable is locked into the car and the charger. And the only way to end that charging session is, a, is either by you, the car or the charger. Thanks, Abhishek. Some great information there for anyone looking to buy an electric car or wanting to upgrade. We hope we've plugged any gaps in your electric car charging understanding. Now all that's left to do is to browse our great range of electric cars right here on cinch.co.uk.